Now, it all started on the 7th of May last year. It was three months into the war, and a Russian missile struck the city of Bakhmut, catching the Ukrainians completely off guard. At the time, there was not a single Ukrainian soldier near the area, and today the city is seeing some of the fiercest fighting that this war has witnessed, and that is how it has been for the last several months. Let's try and understand the geography of Bakhmut. Remember, Bakhmut is part of the Donetsk Oblast, which makes it crucial for the Russians, especially when you have to look at their supply lines. The Donetsk is part of the four regions that Moscow has annexed through its referendums. So to capture one of the key urban centers is going to be a huge strategic boost for the Russian offensive. Moscow desperately needs Bakhmut. It's been throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, at Bakhmut to try and capture this crucial town. For Ukraine, in simpler terms, it is like defending its own land. But with the war having dragged on for over a year now, the fighting has become much more complex. President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that the situation is becoming more and more difficult. The commander of the Ukrainian ground forces is calling it extremely hard. Russia is trying to cut the supply lines off, and this is Moscow's way of forcing the Ukrainians to surrender. Russia hopes to capture Bakhmut by the end of March. So there is, at this moment, no doubt that Russia is tightening its noose. Bakhmut used to have a pre-war population of nearly about 70,000 people. Today, the entire of this city is in complete ruins. The Ukraine, for its part, is not giving up and is trying to help its soldiers to try and retain the territory that it still controls. The spring muddy trenches have a history of ruining plans of enemies. They turn roads into rivers and fields into these boggy wetlands. Now, in case Bakhmut falls to Russia, the next stop could, of course, be the crucial city of Kramatorsk and even Slovyansk, which would give Moscow access to the Donetsk region. And this could possibly change the course of the war because Russia is trying to get more and more into these crucial supply lines that the Ukrainian soldiers have been using to, in fact, supply their soldiers on the front line. The war, of course, is getting complicated as we speak. Now, if Russia does not stop with its annexation of Crimea in 2014, why will it stop with its annexation of Donetsk in 2023? This, of course, is a question for which no one at this point of time has any answers. And it's also not clear as to at what stop will Russia try and stop its offensive. <laughs> Ні нахуя. А, тоді є.